Aloha, namaste. This is Alexis Cox with Radha Home Yoga, and I'm here to bring you our new moon forecast. So we're right on the heels of the new moon here on um, October 27th, coming to the end of the month. Our new moon is in sidereal Libra, and uh, just giving a little shot of the Hawaii landscape here. I'm blessed to be back in back in Hawaii, back on the Big Island right now. Um, so this new moon is going to be bringing up for us relational qualities. It's going to be bringing up for us our ability to compromise, our ability to get along with one another, our ability to create peace and harmony and beauty in the world, and also to, um, you know, really the biggest thing is to find that balance. And oftentimes with Libra, what we find is that we're actually throwing things off balance in order to come back to balance again. So that's a big theme we see throughout the Libra new moon, throughout this cycle. The sun's been here for a while. Um, so we've, you know, we've been reckoning with some of these qualities and moreover, Mercury and Venus have been here for even longer and Mercury has just transited out and gone into Scorpio. So we have been dealing with a lot of these qualities, especially in relationship, especially in our communication, really bringing our communication to a more harmonious place. Um, but now we're going to see that this whole cycle really centers around those themes. And of course, whatever house Libra is for you will, will be a big theme for you as well. So we have a couple other big changes right now. We have Mars and Mercury now, since Mercury just did transit into Scorpio, um, is in an exchange of signs. So when this happens, we see a lot of power passing back between the two signs. Neither Mars or Mercury do that well in each other's signs. So we see that normally Mercury and Scorpio can be a bit controlling, really dramatic, um, emotional and passionate with speech, with communication, with ideas, and not as um, factual, not as objective, a little bit more, um, you know, coming from that impassioned place and that emotional place rather than, than really that rational mind um, that Mercury does best with. And we see that Mars and Virgo can be a little bit, um, you know, detail oriented and nitpicky and get bogged up in the action surrounding those details as opposed to serving some higher purpose, some higher mission, and really being able to physically accomplish something like Mars would prefer. So these two lending each other their power is super great. It's it's a way to see, um, you know, Mars giving that courage to Mercury where maybe we speak our deeper truth, where maybe we're able to use our buddhi, our discrimination, to see um, down deep into the things that we're encountering, maybe even um, in the conversations we're having, being able to work with our own shadow and, and that of others that we're communicating with. And then we also see that with, um, you know, with Mercury giving that drishti to Mars, we might be able to use more discrimination as to what we're physically doing, what we're using our action towards and, and what we're using our anger towards because really Mars in the end, especially when it's frustrated, ends up coming out like anger as opposed to action, which is what we want to see. We want to see that discipline, we want to see that courage, we want to see that action, um, but when it's frustrated, it often it often can, can be a little bit more like anger. Um, and in some of the signs like Virgo, it can, it can come off not even just passive aggressive in Virgo, it's it's more just like nitpicky and so detail oriented that it's missing the reason for action to begin with. Um, so those two are very powerful and of course Mercury is about to go retrograde. We have Mercury um, going retrograde on Halloween on the 31st and going to go well into November till the 20th. So as we all know, you know, our, our computers, our technology, our communication, everything's sort of delayed and we see some challenges around that. Um, when it's in a challenge sign such as Scorpio, we can see that it can it can help us stop and think before we do create some of that more impassioned um, speech and communication. But it will be going retrograde back into Libra, so um, you know there'll be that as well. We got some puppies here. This is Bhagavan, my old friend. <laughs> so um, the other thing Mercury retrograde is doing right now is um, creating a situation where we you know, where we are slower and more delayed. And always the message with Mercury retrograde, although no one really wants to hear it, is that it's about listening. It's about taking the time to listen, speaking less. And when it goes into Libra, when it goes back into Libra, where we do have better communication, where we do have that better, you know, more relational, um, capacity, it can cause some stalls and delays because Mercury is actually really intelligent in, in Libra. And so we see that our, um, 
ability to communicate effectively gets sort of slowed down and there's like mishaps you know like the words don't they get lost in translation or or something doesn't get said or you forget to say what you wanted to say or something like that and that can really come up especially in relationships so just something to be aware of um, the other thing to be really aware of right now specifically the 27th we see that Mars and Saturn are in direct drishti we have Mars giving its four house one-way gaze directly onto Saturn 21 degrees 21 degrees degrees in Sagittarius um, it's really a, you know kind of an intense alignment you see that that pr that propensity that tendency for anger going right into our fear right into that place where we feel the most um, the most riddled with fear the most humble yes but also the most um, sure something's gonna go wrong you know and that can be, you know, we, we've seen it before. We've seen Mars and Saturn join. We've seen this Drishti in June. There was, a, you know, from, from the seventh house, from Gemini to Sagittarius, we saw these two come together. It, it can be brutal. And, and K2 is still pretty close to Saturn. So there is that tendency for that militance that Mars and K2 bring up. And I talked about this a lot in the last forecast, um, how, how it's coming upon us now. So we'll see this playing on the bigger world stage and in our own lives too, that just cutthroat militance, you know, this is how it's gonna be kind of way um, that's really coming from fear, right? and also um, anger, you know, the things that have been making us anger, the details. And, um, and it's gonna be sort of, the fear is in an ideological realm, right? It's in Sagittarius, so we see that our, our um, fear around our ideologies has been leading us a lot, not just this past year, but really since Saturn's been in Sagittarius, which has been for a long time, and we're all ready for January when, when he moves out. Um, but then the same as Mars is giving that four house gaze to Saturn, Saturn is giving a 10th house gaze to Mars. So it's mutual, but it's not the same way as a seventh house mutual gaze. It's two one-way stairs. And so Saturn's giving its power stare to Mars. And you see that also affecting us quite a bit, that harshness, that harsh, cold reality of Saturn, where it's just, um, just doesn't, it doesn't have the capacity for emotion anymore. It's that, it's that old, um, old person just kind of waiting to die that just looks at everything in this sort of bleak light. That's the Saturn in us and it's it's um, it's staring right at that part where we where we feel fired up and we feel angry and that dispassion and especially with K2 join there that we can feel um, can really disconnect us from our from our feelings and from those of course other people. And this will all play out in specific houses for each of us. Um, you know, if you, if you have already gotten my free report on Rahu K2 on the nodes, you'll know where Saturn K2 are in your chart. You'll know what house that is. And, um, likewise, the house lords of Mercury and Mars, right? So we, we have a lot, of, a lot of specifics that are happening in our individual world and also a lot of things that are happening on the bigger stage. And we're going to see this playing out socially, um, you know, more, more clamping down on beliefs, more hardcore militants around those beliefs and more details, more, more nitpicky things that are going to be coming out, you know, maybe in the ways of laws, specific laws being made, um, this kind of stuff that really, uh, really bogs us down in the details and misses the bigger picture of why we're doing any of this to begin with. Um, Jupiter is on almost moving into Sagittarius, which will be a breath of relief for us in many ways. I mean, Jupiter's been in good dignity in Scorpio, but moving into his own sign, we might see ourselves get that boost of idealism, that boost of beliefs and inspiration and ideals that really drive us and that, and that maybe connect us to why we believe what we believe, which has maybe been missing a little bit with Saturn K2 there. So that can help um, a little bit for us, start to bring in the idealism again, start to bring in our inspiration and why we even feel the way we do. Why do we, why do we have the beliefs? we have and what what about them inspires us and what's the point of being inspired right if you're not going to do something different in the world about that so Jupiter will begin that long transit into Sagittarius in just a few days on November 4th um, for most of us in, in uh, America and Saturn again will be moving into its own sign of Capricorn in January of 2020 so we'll start to see some of these energies shift and um, some, some of this intensity that we've been dealing with the Saturn K2 uh, connection and then Mars having its different drishtis it was you know it was worse in June because Mars was joined Rahu but this this intensity that we're just um, facing every time Mars Saturn come across from each other with that K2 there we just uh, you know we just we just aren't connected to our our higher selves and we are connected to our fear and our anger and our sense of of um, militants really that's what you see when you see Mars and K2 coming together it's just that um, that military presence within all of us and of course in the world um, at large and laws and things like that just being 
made from for, from a fearful place and and not from an inspired place so let's let's i'll be excited to, to see some of that start to shift um this new moon is joined venus so we do have venus kind of far degrees because venus is almost also in scorpio um she's at 29 degrees in in her own sign of libra but we do still have that capacity to relate lovingly and to want to find harmony and that's really the big thing with the libra theme is that we want harmony we all want things to be beautiful and perfect but of course they're not always that way and sometimes we compromise or we over compromise and then we end up not feeling good about those compromises we made and we react or act out of out of fear and anger later so we need to be careful on what we're compromising on especially in our relationships um, you know because down the road we're going to end up wanting to defend that boundary later down um, that we that we didn't defend on the front end so it's all all um, it's all personal work you know if, if you saw the interview I did with Sam Jeppy with my teacher the other day um, you know, you, you see that the point of our lives is not just to feel happy all the time. These hardships that we go through, these challenges, are really to help us grow as people. And that's the point. The point of our lives here is to get closer to our truth, closer to that eternal truth, that sanatana dharma. And if we are constantly just feeling good, we're not, we're not getting closer to that truth. We need the trials, we need the tribulations, and while they don't always feel good, they, um, they can ultimately bring us peace because we face them and we deal with them and we are able to um, move past them. So I, I wish that for all of you on this new moon and um, many blessings. Aloha and namaste.